Hi, I'm Brenda from brendacalvertart.com and I would like to show you how to paint lavender in a terracotta pot. I am so glad that you're here. I know you're gonna have fun and I'm gonna guide you along the way. It's going to be very doable and if you're a beginner or an intermediate artist, it doesn't matter. Um, I will help you and you will not be lost. Feel free to pause the video as I go along so that you can go at your own pace. So I will show you the tools that we're going to use. So let's get to it. The tools that you need are brown, white, green, purple, and a burnt sienna. Um, if you don't have burnt sienna, it is a a reddish brown color. And the colors exactly that I have are violet, Prussian green, burnt sienna, titanium white, and burnt umber. But just as long as you have um, a brown, a reddish brown, a white, a green, and a purple. If you don't have purple, um, you just have to mix um, a red, and it blew together, and that makes purple. The brushes that I'm going to be using are a, a large round, a small round, which is a number one, and a medium round, which is a number three. If you're not sure where that is, it is located on the brush itself. I also have an eight by 10 canvas, but you can just use a piece of watercolor paper, or any heavy duty paper, will hold the acrylic paint. I have a paper plate to hold my, um, my paints like a palette, and I just have a paper cup filled with water to wash my brush. And I have some paper towels close by as well. All right, so what you need is a Pencil. Okay, so in the middle of your paper or canvas, um, we are going to start drawing the pot. And I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna do kind of a, a large to medium sized oval that's squished. A squished oval. And I go over it a few times just to make sure that my shape is right. And then I'm gonna do a diagonal line going down on each side. And then do a line parallel to that, right below it. Okay, and this is where I can go, oh, wow, I went over a little too much on here. Don't be afraid to make adjustments. That's why we draw it out ahead of time and it can fix those little mistakes. It's not a big deal. Then, after this line here, I'm gonna go right, um, not directly, but I'm gonna go over just a little bit, go in, still diagonal. And however long, uh, however far down you want to go. And then the line underneath is curved a slight. It's curved the same, whatever um, you curve this one, it's going to match that, okay? Now I'm just gonna see if, I, um, if I'm crooked or off at all. I can erase any of those lines that I think maybe might be wrong. And it's not a big deal. Just kinda fuss with it a little and then say, eh, that's good enough. And, okay, then you're going to get out a white and a little bit of brown. Um, mine, again, is burnt umber, but any kind of brown is great. Um, if you want a pure white background, then just paint your background white. That's great. Um, I just wanted mine a little bit of an off-white color. And so... I went ahead and um, did that. I'm gonna add a little bit more white to it. 
mix that in. You want a big brush because you have a lot of space to get. Um, so like I said, like I just want a, a kind of an off white color and I'm going to fill in my whole background, go carefully around the pot and you guys can fill that in. Okay, you guys see the globs that I have here? I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to um, just smooth them out all in the same direction so that it, uh, the brush strokes look um, even. And if I go over the pot a little bit, that's fine. I would rather you go into the pot than skip all around it. You definitely want that filled in with paint. So that's your background. Um, if you would rather like a light gray or something like that, that's great too. Just make sure um, it's uh, a light color that will show well. All right, now um, we're going to um, do this medium brush. Um, any, any medium brush is great. And I'm gonna take the burnt sienna that I have and I'm just gonna fill in the left side with this color. So I have the left side of the pot. And notice how my brush stroke lines are, you know, the I'm not coming at it this way, right? I'm gonna have a nice clean line if I come at it with the tip of the brush at the line that I need straight. And then I'm also going to use this burnt sienna color um, right underneath the lid. Oh, well, it's not a lid, I don't know. What is that, you guys? <laughs> okay, so right in there and on the left side. And then I'm also going to put it right here on this side. I'm gonna go into my background a little bit because I lost some of that when I painted over it. Okay, so just the left side. And that is my shading, my shadow side. So I'm gonna take my white paint now And take a little bit of the burnt sienna in the white. Okay, and we're gonna make a lighter brown for the lighter side of the pot. And I love this color, don't you? Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna take that and add it to the right side. Fill in all the rest of this space here. Make sure you have a nice um, curve at the bottom. And if you wanna just do your brush strokes, uh, the direction of the pot, that's nice, cause it kind of just allows uh, the shape to be 3D. And you'll notice when I got in here, um, it started to blend a little, but I have to be careful. So I'm gonna just wipe my brush on my paper towel make my brush a little more dry and I'm gonna just drag this darker burnt sienna into my lighter shade so that it blends just a little better and then I can have fun making it dance in between the two colors and just get a right blend this might take some practice um, wherever you're at um, in your art journey um, just depends on how quick you are to get that. Okay, that's good. And then I'm gonna take uh, my light color and just fill in the right side here. See how I'm coming at it this way? So I can get a nice smooth line. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my brush off, make it dry so that these two colors can blend. I don't lose one or the other that way. Okay, now I need a brown. I'm going to use a burnt umber, but any kind of brown is great. And we're just gonna fill in the top portion of the pot.
right. You guys ready for your greens? Let's get out the green. Wash your brush. And I just have this, um, a paper cup, and I just make it dance at the bottom of the cup. And then I wipe it on my paper towel, and it's clean. So we're gonna take some green now, and I like to kind of act like I'm mixing the paint a little, just to um, mix it up so it's not globby or anything, and then I roll it, and then I pat it on the side of my plate, and I twist it over this way, I twist it over that way. It gets it nice and flat, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and make a few stems. So I'm gonna come up in the middle of the pot, just like it's growing out. And to make a thin line, you do have to hold it um, very lightly so it doesn't really push down very much. That's how you make a thin line. Um, sometimes, now I've worked with paint um, that's really tough to work with. And what you have to do is just, you have to get um, a water bottle and you just squirt one squirt, not too much of water. Um, and that helps you to make a thin line. And so um, if that's uh, a factor with your paint, then great. You can go ahead and use water. Um, so let's see, we have, A few here. Do your lines look like that? They don't have to look exactly like mine. See how mine are variegated and I don't care because um, in nature everything is just different. It's not all the same. So if yours turn out different, that's totally fine. And I want mine kind of going different directions. And this is hard. I'm, I'm kind of holding my brush in a different way so that you can see it. So um, hopefully I don't normally hold a brush like this. <laughs> so I'm trying to get it so that you can see what I'm doing. And, okay, so I'm gonna do a few more of these. And when you think you have enough stems coming up, we're gonna add some little branches coming out of each stem. Now, if you Notice, I see some brown coming up with my green and I love that. I think that's so cool because my brown is still wet and so it's just coming, because I'm coming up from the brown and I'm going up. So I think it's super cool and I love it. So, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna do some bigger stems just coming out all right here. Just a couple. Okay. All right. If you'll notice, I'm just kind of patting. It's very important that you don't just take a glob of paint and put it on there. You do need to smooth it out on your brush first before you put it on um, that might help your lines. Okay, in making stems, you want um, smaller lines coming out, and um, it's just very uh, variated on how many, just make them different sizes and where they are. I need to grab more paint. Don't forget, you gotta always grab more paint and I'm just having fun doing different styles and not really caring if it's perfect because 
It shouldn't be. It's not absolutely perfect. Okay, I'm just trying to kind of fill up this area with greens. So get that going here. Who here loves lavender? Do you love it? I love the smell. I think it's one of my favorite smells. All right. You guys, do you have a purple ready to go? If not, you can just mix it with um, blue and red and you just Practice adding more blue or more red until you get the shade that you want. So I'm going to wash my brush. Wipe it on the paper towel and then get out the purple. Now the purple, I think I'm going to go ahead and use my number one brush and Here's my purple, it's pretty dark. I'm going to mix it and then um, make my brush flat um, with my small brush. And I am going to put it in a few spots here. So using the tip of the brush, I'm gonna use that to my advantage and just kind of go from the top down and making some stems on a one of these stems here. Um, so I'll call these petals of the lavender so that we're all on the same page and know what we're talking about. And they just kind of go diagonally down. Um, and it's about, mm, you could do an inch, inch and a half. Um, they don't go all the way down to the pot. So they just sit on the top. And I think this one would be fun because it's kind of pointing a different way. That might be a good place to put one. And it's up to you. You can pick which stems you're gonna put your petals on. Doesn't matter. I don't think I put enough here. I'm gonna do just a couple more. But I also want each petal to show, so. Okay, that's two. And I'm gonna put one down in here one that's kind of in the greenery as well okay and let's see kind of just gauge hmm where would one look good okay oh that kind of looked like it was going to that I'm gonna have to um, do that in my shading later to make sure that it doesn't look like it's one big petal or one big piece of lavender okay one there and then we all put this one together here and if you notice I keep grabbing more paint um, there's no way that I can do all of these with one brush load of paint I've got to keep loading okay You're gonna get quicker as the more you get used to this. <laughs> but if it's taking you a while, that's totally fine. Um, also, one of my little secrets is that if you mess up and you're like, ah, I didn't want that there, then you just grab a baby wipe and it will just wipe off whatever you know mistake you thought you did i'll just do an example if i thought maybe oh i don't like that then you can just wipe it off so um never fear it's all gonna be okay 
Okay, I'm gonna put one down low again over here. And get that. Okay, what do you think? Do you think I need any more? Maybe a little one right here, possibly. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of white to my purple. And I'm just going to mix it over here. I don't want to totally get rid of that dark. I still want to be able to use some of that um, just in case. But I'm going to make this part lighter. And I'm rolling and I'm patting off to the side. And then I'm going to highlight some of these. So I have, um, I don't, I'm not covering the dark purple at all. I'm just setting it on the tops of each petal. So it's called a highlight. And it just kind of sets that and defines it a little better. Okay, and these here it really shows up in the ones that are in the greenery um, because it kind of got lost in there so this just really makes it pop okay so get those on there I'm gonna add even more white to that light purple and I'm gonna make an even lighter purple and you can probably guess what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna add another highlight um, I'm not going to put them on every single petal, but I'm going to um, just kind of highlight the, okay, pat, pat, see how much lighter that is. Now I'm going to just highlight a few or where I think it needs an extra oomph or a pop right down in here. So I'm not covering it totally, I'm just um, putting it on the top, okay? I'm really proud of you guys. I'm, uh, I'm thankful that you're doing this and giving it a go and trying your best and that's all I can ask. So that's awesome. And if you're just watching for fun, um, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for your support. And um, oops, I had a glob right there. <laughs> and um, I'm just so thankful for you guys. Seriously, the best. And um, I love um, chatting with you on Instagram and on my website. It's pretty great. So. I love getting to know you better. Okay, so play around with it until you think it's done. And then you're gonna go ahead and just sign it with any color. Since I had the purple last, I'm just gonna use it and I have my little number one brush, so it's perfect for signing your name. And um, you can sign your name any way you want. You can do your initials, you could do, uh, your last name, you just your first name, it's up to you. Um, and remember, you can use a baby wipe to wipe it off if you didn't like it. Um, there's no pressure at all. And if you'd rather just sign your name on the back, that's fine too. I highly encourage you to write the date on the back because so often we just simply forget how long ago we did something. Um, and then two years goes by and it's like, oh, what day did I do that I totally forgot? So, um, yeah, just have fun with that. And um, I encourage you to try more and give one as a gift. They make great gifts. <laughs>